Hey guys, welcome back. It is your favorite Gimp with a Limp, and I'm back with some more Age of Dogfights. We're going to jump into the game. Make sure you watch the first part if you haven't. That covers the, the basic overview of how the game's played, but we're going to get into specifics now. Uh, we've got both sides lined up, ready to go. Remember, four planes start coming onto the board, and then any extras you have can come on uh, in later rounds for, I guess, each round. Uh, able to come on since I've got six aircraft per slide. I'm gonna have four come on for each the Germans and then the British and then have an extra couple of planes come on in the next round. I'm gonna have the Germans as the solo so they're gonna get to use the AI die that I threw across the floor but um, honestly the way the solitaire rules read and I had mentioned this in the previous video it's pretty well what you would expect if you're kind of playing both sides anyway. It's like, check to see if they're exposed. And exposed means basically, are they able to be shot at or can they be shot at easily? You know, are they in a, a potentially vulnerable situation, right? Okay, if they are, try to get out of the vulnerable situation. And if they're not in an exposed situation, then they want to get in towards the, the target aircraft, whether it's a mission priority aircraft or not, you know, they'll, they'll target the mission priority uh, and try to get into a good firing position. So basically it's, I mean, not to put too uh, simple term on it, but it's do the best thing for the, for the AI. Now there are some roles uh, for the AI and in the interest of saving time, I'm not gonna worry too much about some of these ones that uh, wouldn't make sense or, um, would just kind of add to it like i'm going to do what makes the best sense for the ai like rolling for the blue or the green die for the ai aircraft there's no real reason for them to use the green die to start off with they want to save that for when they need that uh in game so limited resources i'm not just going to burn through same thing with like uh long burst if they're in a good situation to take down an aircraft and it's good for a long burst yeah i'm gonna go ahead and do it and if they're in a situation where it can you know, go either way, then, you know, roll on it. And it's the, the basic stuff. One to three short bursts, four to six long bursts. So yes, no type uh, uh, stuff. But we will use that solitaire die in there, which it lists down here, random maneuver. And we're actually going to start with that because I want to kind of get them in random places on the board. Because in my mind, here's the situation. They've got like a little base camp or something over here. And the British are sending in some aircraft to try to do a little bombing run, but the Germans haven't picked up on it just yet. So they've just got some um, aircraft up in the air doing some random maneuvers. These scouts I put all at level four. And then the fighters here, I put at all different altitudes just to change things up a little bit. So I got level one, level two, and level three. Uh, the one and the three are coming on first, and then the two will come on. Just that way, so there's aircraft at altitudes one to four, with the opposing side over here when my aircraft come on, just to kind of see what the AI is gonna do. Now, the way it is, you see you've got two entrance points and I've got all the aircraft pointed going in this direction. So I'm gonna roll the die for it and see if they're gonna go straight or if they're gonna kind of veer left or right. So for this guy, for example, if he comes on and veers right, then I'm gonna try to kind of steer him in this direction using his turns. Going straight, go up that way, going left, try to veer him up towards the north. Same with the rest of these. Uh, after they're done with their maneuvers, then it's gonna be the British aircraft coming onto the board and it's just gonna flip flat, uh, flip forth, uh, back and forth just like that. These aircraft are not part of it, they were just my examples. All right, so now the way it's gonna work, we're gonna explain it a little more in detail now. Aircraft, all aircraft are gonna roll the blue die before they move. Some aircraft have the ability to roll the green die. Remember the green die is the speedy die, but you gotta keep track of your little speedy burst maneuvers. So you only wanna use this one in specific uh, circumstances. So we're gonna start with this fella here. We're gonna roll our die, see how much of a boost or a detriment he's gonna get. And he got zero, so no change. I think this goes up to plus two and down to negative one, yep. So it's got a, a fairly amount of uh, leeway there, three points worth of movement difference. So let's roll our AI die, see where he's gonna go. And he's going straight. So we're just gonna take him four points onto the board. One, two, three, four. 
That is it for his maneuver. He will end right there. Bam, we're done. Let's do the same for our uh, next scout coming on. He got zero, and is he going to turn in any direction? He's going to head up to the left, and that symbol has the, the green part. Come on, focus in. Has to do with their uh, rotary engines. If they had a rotary engine and steered better to the right, then they would go right instead. These planes do not have rotary engines. Uh, I went for an easy route and none of the aircraft on the board have rotary engines because I knew that would be one that I would forget the uh, the rule on, uh, forget to apply it. So I wanted to make sure I didn't forget it. So this guy is going to kind of steer left. Now he's got two points of movement. So, or he's got four points of movement and two agility. So it means two turns. Let's go one, two, three, we'll turn here and then go up here for four. So he's heading in that direction now. We're gonna do the same with these two fighters that are coming on the board. Like I said, I'm just kind of getting some aircraft on the board in just random positions uh, for me to go after. We've got our first fighter, fighter number nine coming on, sticking with the blue dye. We're not changing it up, no green yet. And he's also getting us, how many damn zeros are on this? Uh, that's two zeros. Yeah, it's two zeros, two ones, a two and a negative one. So I keep rolling that, uh, that zero. I wonder if the die might be weighted a little off. All right, well, let's see if he's going to go in a different direction. He is going to veer to the right. And since he does not have a rotor engine, this is actually good for them. He's going to come down in this direction. He has three agility, though and a speed of six, so he has a lot more speed. One, two, yeah, we'll turn him here, three, four, five, and we'll bring him down to here, six. So he's kind of veering down over here, and you can see how it looks cool on the board with the different altitudes. This guy's down at level one, this guy's up at level four, and yes, you can fly over each other, and if you have an aircraft that is landing directly on top, right? So you couldn't have two aircraft in the same spot at uh, level one and level five, right? Or um, at level four. They both couldn't be at the same altitude, same spot, but they can be on the same spot at different altitudes. And just as an example, let's say with this aircraft being at level four, if another aircraft were to finish there, you would take a level one altitude marker place it on top and that aircraft would be put there to signify that it's at level five. I really like the inclusion they did with that. Plus there are actual pieces that they included with the game because a plane can end its movement in level flight, uh, either elevating or, or descending. So depending on which way they're facing, you might not be able to put an aircraft on top like that. They included little uh, yellow plastic pieces you can put on top that gives you a flat, stable place just in case you do have an aircraft that is going up or down and one on top. I like that they put that in there. All right, so that fighter's done. We'll do this fighter up here. Same thing, blue dye, where's he going? Zero, good grief. All right, so zero with zero and plus one like that. All right, let's see if it's that same zero that keeps uh, rolling. And let's roll our die, see where he's going to end up. He is steering left, and I don't want to steer him too far left because he'll be out of the zone. Let's see, one, two, three, four, five, and six. So we'll have him up here. That way he's not too far off. But they're kind of circling their base. Eh, that'll work. Now, here's where my aircraft are coming on. I have a couple of scouts myself and a couple of fighters. My fighters are faster. They go at speed seven, but again, theirs are speed six with four agility. My, wait, four or five? No, they've only got three agility. Whoops, I read that wrong. They've only got three agility. So my fighters are just a little bit faster. That could end up uh, being in my favor. My, my scouts, I believe are the same. You know, speed four, and speed four to agility, yep, they're both the same there. But I do have a bomber that's coming on that is not uh, too maneuverable. Only agility two 
And again, it's not consecutive. So he has to move a couple of spaces before he could turn again. So he will be easier to get on top of, but uh, he's got a lot of guns around him. So yeah. And the cool part is you can like have a wing of bombers flying together and have overlapping fields of fire. So pretty much no way that the enemy comes in. Can they get away from someone being able to get a shot at them? Really cool stuff. All right, so let's see here. I will, let's just roll the die over here, save myself a little bit of time. Uh, first scout, he gets plus two. Huh, finally get one and it's on mine. So he gets a movement of six and two turns. So let's just bring him on in. One, and we'll turn, and you can turn like right off the bat, right? So one, two, three, four, five, and do I want to turn down? Yeah, we'll turn down. That way I'm flying in this direction. And see, he's at level four, and mine have a ceiling. My scouts only have a ceiling of four. Theirs have a ceiling of five, so they can go higher than mine, so I need to gain some altitude for some advantage. So how you signify that is you tilt it up like so. That means on the next round, my aircraft is climbing, but I'm gonna lose some speed in that. So for each level that I climb, I lose one of my speed. That's one of those times where uh, rolling a green die would be a bonus if you have an aircraft that can do that. If they're making a hard ascent, trying to gain some altitude, you roll that green die to make up for the speed that you're gonna lose in the climb. All right, let's roll real quick for my other scout. Got a plus one. And he is also at level three. Might leave him at three. I don't know. Because I we're going to be like circling around with each other. We'll have to see how this goes. Um, one, two. And he's got a movement of four. So I've got movement of five total. We'll turn here. Three, four, five. I'll we'll have him finish their level, try to keep my uh, aircraft near each other. Now we got the others coming in. And let's see if I can get my fighters coming down here. First fighter, he gets a zero, so nothing big, but they are pretty speedy. So we're going to just bring him straight on in. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. And I think I'm gonna leave them at three because I can't focus on one altitude. All their scouts are gonna start at level four, but they have guys, like I said, between levels one and four. So I've gotta be able to go in any direction. So let's check for our other one. See where he's gonna go. He got negative one. Oh, that sucks. So he's gonna get only six movement. One, two, three, four, five, six. Slow down just a little bit, but I got a couple of fighters screaming in. We'll bring in this one here. And I got the bomber getting ready to come in. And I'm probably gonna put the bomber as close as possible to where it's going, because this bomber is not fast, not maneuverable. I'm thinking I might shoot him up and then try to come over and try to screen with these four uh, aircraft here, while this fighter maybe sticks close to the bomber, like come down here, or maybe keep one of the scouts close to him. Someone that can kind of guard him. All right, we're going to do something similar with these guys. I am going to put this fella here closest to mine and same with this guy because now they've got an idea. We're going to say they have an idea that other aircraft are coming in, so they're going to start doing their approaches and coming in that direction. So that actually gives them the ability to have one that can circle around over here, try to get behind in an advantageous position to some of my guys. All right. Their turn to go, and now I believe the way it does it, now it doesn't say you have to move any specific aircraft first, but I do believe like if there's a, it said something in the rule book, if there was a choice between like which aircraft start with the lowest numbered and work your way up. But I think I'm just gonna kind of stick with what I started with, help me remember it. We'll do our first couple of scouts, fighters, or do our scouts and then our fighters back and forth, it'll make it easier for me to remember and then see how it changes up. Now, one thing it does mention 
in our little brief here is that you can only have six aircraft per side on the board in the Comet area at any one time. You can have more aircraft lined up ready to go. So you could have 12, 12 aircraft on each side, right? But only six will be in the, the actual combat. And then if you lose some or they get damaged and fly out, <clears throat> then you'll take and bring others in from your uh, patrol zone out here into the fight. All right, so I'm going to bring on this fella, get him on there, and then we'll move our other two scouts, and then we'll bring on that one and hit the other two fighters. Let's see what he's going to roll for his movement. Zero. <laughs> Every time I put it through this, it comes out zero. So he's got four movement. You go one, two, three, four. We'll have him end there. And now we know that they want to approach. So this is where I'm gonna start just making uh, choices for them. And if I can't figure out a best choice for them, whatever the case may be, then I might roll a die to to help decide, but we know they want to approach and try to get some shots down range. Let's roll for this one, see how much movement he's going to have. And he gets zero. <laughs> Constantly zero, man. All right. So he could turn this way, but I don't want him to collide. And I've got a couple over here. Maybe he goes up just a little bit and then turns down on him. One, two, three and then four we'll have them finish here pointing down and now this one unfortunately is turned the wrong way so hopefully he can get enough movement but he's not aerobatic so he can't do those aerobatic maneuvers i was just thinking <clears throat> i might have him do a split s but he does not have the ability the fighters do but he does not. And really to understand it, it's so hard to describe. You really need to see the pictures in the rule book. But basically he would be doing a rollover turn to come back in this direction. As it is, he's just gonna have to kind of make a sweeping turn. So let's roll for him. Get some extra movement. Plus one, cool, all right. That gives him five. So if he goes one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, he can end up here pointing down. That gets him in the right direction. That's perfect. All right, so let's bring this fighter on now. He's at level two. We will, maybe we could burn one. Maybe he wants to get in there quick. Yeah, we'll show a green die. Actually, you know, we'll roll for it because it's it's either or on him. So I'll, I'll roll for it. One to three, he won't use it. Four to six, he will use the green die. Nope, he won't use it. Okay. We'll stick with the blue die for you. You want to take your time. You want to assess the situation. No problem. Plus one. Yeah, that's good. He gets a little bonus movement, which means he's up to seven. So he can go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. He can come screaming in all the way to here. Pretty quick. That's not too bad. All right. Now, yeah, I like that. They've got guys at level one, two, and four all kind of zooming in towards mine and then all their scouts are at level four coming in so they they're kind of swamping me now all right so that one's taken care of and did i move this one no i didn't move that one because that one just came on so let's roll for him see which way he's going to come on or which way he's going to go rather excuse me he got a zero so we will go one two, three, four, five, six. And we're going to end him going up because he definitely needs to gain some elevation. All of my aircraft are above him. So it takes care of them. We've just got one down over there. Oh no, I was gonna let him do a, uh, a wing over, but I forgot for most of the acrobatic maneuvers, you have to end in a elevated position and he's not gaining altitude, so he can't do it. So that is all right. He's got a uh, agility of three, and we're gonna burn a green die, absolutely, because he is way out there and he wants to get stuck in. He's number seven, so we take and pop this down to signify it and see what kind of bonus movement he's gonna get. Plus one, no, <laughs> what a waste. Oh, I was hoping to get like a plus five or something, a plus one. For a green die is not that good. 
Okay, so let's turn immediately. That gives him a movement of seven, so one, two, or not two, but that's one. That's his second turn. Three, four, five, six, and seven. He was still able to get there. He's at level three. My guys are at level three, so he's going to stick with level altitude. He's coming screaming in on him. I might have to divert one of my fighters over there to keep him from getting on my six, because if that was what I was thinking, I could have these guys kind of flank these guys, but if I do that, then I open up my butt, unless I send that fighter after him. Maybe I'll do that. All right, so now we're back to mine, and I'm going to start with bringing the bomber on. And the bomber obviously does not have any blue maneuvers or any green maneuvers, so he will do his blue plus one. Good, good, good. I'm good with that. So that gives him five. Unfortunately, his ceiling is low. Yeah, his ceiling is only three. I would love to get him higher, but he's going to just be stuck right in the middle of it. So that gives him five movement. One, two. We'll do a turn there. Three, four, five, and we'll finish turning with his second turn up that way. Trying to kind of get him away from the scrum that's getting ready to happen right around here, the little dog pile that's going to happen, furball. Have him come this way and then shoot over if I can get him on a good path. Let's see. One, two, three, four. Yeah, four spots up. And a direct turn will take him on a nice line right through the whole path. And follow this line right there. Yeah, perfect. Four movement points up. That's his base movement anyway. Four up and left turn will take him straight to the bombing area. Perfect. All right, let's move the rest of my fighters. And we're going to switch this guy out for a four. Because he is climbing. Give me just a sec. All right, but that climb, I'm only taking him to level four. That is going to reduce whatever my movement ends up being by one. But I got a plus two, which is good. So that means it's plus one. I still got five movement left. Where do I want to go? One, two, three, four. Ooh, they're going to get onto me before I can get onto them. There's, there's no way. It'll be front facing fire is where it's going to be one two three four turn five and we'll just leave them there all right perfect uh yeah i don't know where he's going to end up but he does have the rear gun turret but so do they so this is going to be a lot of offensive and defensive fire i think happening uh going on back and forth over here damn i didn't end him up and they, I could drop him down one. Because you know what? Their fighters are definitely more of a threat than their scouts. Absolutely. Because the fighters get the bonuses. So maybe if I drop down, because this guy's coming up to a two. If I drop him down to a two, then they have both their fighters at level two. So yeah, we're going to finish that guy at two. All right. And let's roll for him. Plus two. Very nice. All right, that gives me six movement total and two turns. How do I want to do this? So one, two, three, four, five, six. If I drop down, just depending. Yeah, well, let's just go ahead and do it. I don't know. We'll see what happens. I'm trying to double think myself like, okay, if I come up here, then later I can do that. And it's all right. No problem. We'll see who wins this. See who the dice gods are favoring. One, two, three, four, five, six. He'll come up. And do I want to turn him? Nah. It's it, depending on his position, right? Matters because of your angle of fire. I can show you in this, you see, depending on where you're firing at the aircraft, the most advantageous is directly behind them, uh, at same altitude, same everything, that way you can you know, stick right onto them. But if you're farther away or coming in at an angle, then you start losing like uh, columns. So you start firing at column B instead of column A. So I'm trying to make sure, because they're faster, 
that they're not going to be able to get in a good firing position on me. And I don't think they are. But especially if I turn here and tilt myself down, that way he's going to be coming up. So even if he comes up at my front, we're going to be like pointing at each other. And the other one will be firing at my side if he came and you aren't guaranteed to get a shot like from the side, I think, because they're like whizzing by. So it has to be like at the rear angles. We'll worry about that when we get stuck in here in a sec. But yeah, I'm finishing there. All right, so scouts are done. Bombers moved. Now we got to do our fighters. I got one fighter left coming on. Let's roll for him, see how much extra movement he's going to get. And you know what? I'm going to spend a green die myself. That is fighter number 10. We'll drop this down because I want to try to get over there to him quickly. Keep to him off. Plus two. That's not bad. It's, it's all right. That brings him up to a nine. He's at three. He's at three. Perfect. All right. So that's going to give him nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And we're going to finish with a turn right there. That way I can come in on him either face to face or whatever, but he's not going to be able to zip over here. Like if he rolled a green die, he could potentially get enough to get past me. We're not going to have him doing that. Uh, two fighters left. We'll stick with blue dies for them. See what they're going to do. Come on, let's get in there fast. Get him, get him. Plus one. Okay, that gets him eight. I kind of want to get right around here. So one. There's a turn. Two, three, four, five. Turn six, seven, eight. There we go. Coming in on, I'm at level three. He's at level four. They're at level two. So I might have him go up. That way he's going to be coming into the scout right over here. And the other fighter, I'm probably going to drop down to snake onto these guys. So I'll have a fighter and a scout trying to deal with their scouts and I could put a couple of fighters and a scout onto their two fighters over here. That way, hopefully I've put it to where I'll, I'll do decent. But honestly, your fighters can do all right. I mean, the difference between a single machine gun and a double machine gun is only the double machine gun gets a, a plus one bonus. So it's not huge. These guys being able to fire from the rear does make a difference because it may, means they're very defensive and they can be offensive in the rear. They can fly in such a way to turn themselves to where they can get that rear shot off, whereas a traditional fighter can't. But that traditional fighter is a lot faster and more maneuverable. All right, so yeah, let's bring the other guy in. Roll for him real quick, see where he's gonna go. He got a plus one, so he's gonna go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Do I wanna turn him now? We're gonna leave him right there and we're gonna point him down because he's screaming in on him. He's gonna be dropping. And did I have him level? No, I've got him climbing. That's what it is. There we go. All right, so mine are moving all over the place. I gotta make sure I tilt it hard enough that I can see where he's gonna be. Yeah, so these guys are all descending onto them. You know, this, where the scrum is, is pretty well set now. And I again, I like how the pieces are set up with black and the white because it is relatively easy to look at. It's harder to see on camera, but when you're right here on it, you can pretty easily see that black outline of the black pieces. So you can tell which ones are one side and which ones are the other side, but they are, uh, <laughs> it's a, it, it is a little bit to keep track of when you got all this going on and obviously you are playing it by yourself, but oh man, this is fun. I gotta say, I really, really am enjoying this. I am so kicking myself in the butt for not getting the, uh, the expansion that had blimps and all the other crap going on. And it really wasn't that much more. So I'm definitely gonna be looking to their retail store the end of April. 
I just want it now because I want to have it on the board, you know, filming to show you guys. But uh, you know what it is. FOMO, fear of missing out, all that good stuff. All right, so when we pick up, we'll see if my uh, aircraft are enough to hold them off. They've got five. How do they have five? Oh, that's right, because I've got one that's a bomber who's trying to avoid everything. And he's going to do 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 along that way very slowly. So they are going to have an advantage over me, one on one up there and then four on five down here. So they do have one extra scout to uh, to go after me. But I'm hoping that switching it up a little bit by having a scout and a fighter going after each group and kind of divide them out in the levels, have a fight going on down here at level two, and then another fight going on up here at level four, altitude four, I should say, uh, will keep them divided up enough. Because you can, like I said, you can fire up and down. And a lot of this you're having to kind of keep mentally in your mind because there's that imaginary line for each level you know, one, two, three, four, five, six, all the way up to six, that combat's going on in. And depending on the location of your aircraft, they can fire up to two distances away. So, you know, one, two, if they're right directly adjacent to each other, let me grab these just to show you. This, you know, is adjacent to each other one space away, but you can also get shots off at this distance as well with these machine guns. Obviously column B, but you've gotta be in just the right place to make these types of shots. But it can be vertical as well. So if this one's at level one and this one's up at level two and they're tilted in the right directions, those shots can still happen. Or if they still, if they have uh, ventral machine guns that can fire down beneath them, things like that. So there's that, that 3D chess element going on to it. It's not just combat at the base level that you're looking at. You have to consider not only where your opponent's guns are facing like on that level, but can they adjust it and hit you uh, from your level, like from level three to four, you know, stuff like that. You guys will see what I mean when the, uh, the combat starts here in the next video, now that they're all uh, ready to get stuck in. All right, but we're going to pause it here. We will pick up on uh, the next video with the actual combat kicking in now that they're on top of each other. You guys stay tuned for that. Y'all take care. I will catch you in the next episode.